I will be able to come here to worship you freely without fear of persecution by our government. And thank you for all the people who, are, who came here this weekend who could have done anything else. Um, Lord, I pray that you be with the person, the speaker, who is going to be giving us our next lesson and um, the next the next song we get. And now we have a Mia King leading us in song. The joy of the Lord will be my strength.
Alright, hey y'all. So, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Macy, and I'm a senior in high school this year, and I am going to Harding in the fall, trying to get as far away from my parents as possible. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I'm going to start off with a story, and this happened actually a couple weeks ago, and it was over spring break, and my family and I decided to go on a cruise which I totally recommend if you haven't been on one. There's something for everybody, which is great. So this is Easter Sunday. We were boarding the cruise ship. And if you've never been on a cruise, this is going to sound kind of foreign to you, but it's kind of like an airplane. You pull your luggage off on the side, and then you go through security. And once you go through security, you go to a kiosk. And you kind of sign in, and you get your stateroom, like sea pass boarding card for that week, which you can charge um, to on the ship. And then you get your room information and everything. And then they have you sit in this like warehouse type of deal. And until they're ready for you to get on the cruise ship, you stay in the warehouse. And so finally we were ready to go um, board the ship. And we're going through the little hallways. And they start playing the Titanic theme song. <laughs> which, if this was not my third cruise, I would have walked the opposite direction. But we, we got on the cruise and everything. And then one of the first things that you do when you get on a cruise ship is you have to go to these muster stations, which is basically like if the ship were to sink or some emergency were to happen, this is where you would go to get on your rescue boat, which how well did that work for Leonardo DiCaprio? Not very well. But so you're depending on this piece of plastic to get you from the water to land. And so I'm here to talk about the ultimate safety and something that we can be 100% confident in and that we can grab hold on to. So I'm going to read Matthew chapter 14. And I'm going to start in verse 25. And I know that when you see this, Jesus walks on the water, you're like, okay, I've heard this story. I can kind of tune you out for a little bit. But instead, I want you to kind of think to yourself and put yourself in Peter's shoes. And think about how this could be you. Because later on from this video, you're going to realize that you've been rescued just the same way Peter was. So starting in verse 25, it says, During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith in why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. And so in just the same way, we have been rescued. Okay, we have something that we can grab hold on to and be 100% confident in. And I want you to kind of think about that because I don't want you to fear the murky waters of uncertainty. Because we can be 100% confident in Jesus. And so I'm going to go through three points. I'm going to talk about what we're rescued from, why we're rescued, and by what we're rescued. So the first part, what we're rescued from, and that is sin. And in Galatians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4, it reads, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. And then uh, if you flip over to Colossians 1, in verse 13 it says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. And so both of those verses illustrate that we were separated from God and we were stuck in sin. And if you think about that, that is a very scary place to be. And so hopping back over to the cruise story, now we're three to four days into the week. And we, to this day, we're going to Jamaica. And so... Earlier that week, my parents had booked this excursion, and we were going to go climb the waterfall in Jamaica, and then we were going to go to a beach, and they were going to have lunch, and then we were going to watch the dolphins and everything, and so we were so excited. And so that night, my mom and I stayed in one stateroom, and my brother and my dad stayed in the other stateroom, which I highly recommend. And we said, that earlier that night, we said, okay, y'all need to be ready, because we needed to meet at 8.30. And we were like, okay, y'all need to be ready at 6. We're going to go get breakfast so that we can be on the dock. We had to be at, off the ship in Jamaica and meet at 
And so we all got up that morning. Dad and Cole were up. We were so proud of them. And we went over to breakfast, and it was so pretty. We watched a sail in Jamaica as we ate. And then it was about 7.45, and we didn't have clearance yet for the ship for us to get off. And so we went up to the pool area, and we like, looked out in Jamaica, and it was it's so gorgeous. And so Mom and I had to go to the bathroom. We wanted to go to the bathroom before we got off the ship. And so we were like, okay, y'all stay here, which if you've never been on a cruise ship, there's no texting, there's no communication well, through your email, Facebook, Twitter, Beeper, Pager, there's nothing. It's like old times face to face. And so we said, y'all stay here, we're going to come back, we're going to go to the bathroom. So we went to the bathroom, and you know, like every other woman who had leaked their bladder at the same time, there was a line. And so it did take a while, but eventually we were done, and we went back out, and Cole and Dad were not there. And so we were like, great. And it's now almost time for us to get off the ship. And we have all four of our tickets. Like, they have no idea where we go. And so we check all the obvious places. We check the arcade, the food, the sports deck, and they were nowhere. And so we're like, okay, we're going to get off the ship because maybe they, maybe they were smart and got off the ship. And maybe they're going to be right there waiting for us. So we get off the ship, and they're nowhere to be found. So my mom, as you guys can imagine, is freaking out. You know, we're in Jamaica, and we can't find my brother and my dad. And so, uh, you know, time passes, and we decide to go to the excursion place. And to make a long story short, they were walking towards us, and we met up with them. And there were many words exchanged that morning, but we had a great day. And I'm sure you guys have a similar story where you've been separated, and it's scary. And so to be separated from God is just such a scary situation to think about. But I don't want to. I don't want to sound like were rescued one time, like when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that was our one rescue, because every single day we are rescued from something, whether you realize it or not, we're rescued from temptations, from fears, from situations, and I feel like it's easy now that I've grown up and matured a little bit to look back at some friend situations that I've had where I can pinpoint times where I've been rescued from those situations, like these little events happen that rescued me from these bad situations that I was in. Okay, so that's what we're rescued from. So now, why are we rescued? And this is going to sound like I'm trying to put three points in here like every speaker does, but it's because God loves us. And in Psalm 18, verse 19, it reads, He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. And as Rachel illustrated, we did not deserve it at all. I mean, and it's crazy to think about because... God let his most important thing that he had be sacrificed for us. And I want you to think about a movie or a book or a song or a comic strip and think about a, a rescuer. And they all have something in common. And that's that rescuers don't stop to make value judgments on our personal character before rescuing us. And so think about it this way. What if the fireman didn't rescue that girl because she cut him off in traffic earlier that week? Or the lifeguard didn't rescue the guy who grabbed the last pack of Oreos at the grocery store earlier that day that he wanted. Or the Titanic people didn't rescue Rose because she ultimately killed Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> if God didn't rescue us because we told that one little white lie the other day, like think about how, where we would be. So I want you to kind of think about that his love moves mountains. And so speaking of mountains, we're kind of flipping from the cruise story now. I was earlier, I was about, I don't know how old it was, maybe 13 or something, and I was learning to ski. And if y'all have been with me for five minutes, you know I'm not a nature person at all. Cannot, cannot be in the nature. But uh, I decided to go on the ski resort vacation with my family. And so we were, my dad and I were going up on the ski lift. And you know, I have my little skis on and my little pizza formation sitting there. And Dad's beside me, and we're going on the ski lift, and we're going up the mountain. And so, you know, at one point, you have to get off. And so, I'm looking at the people going off in front of me, and they're having no issue. They're just getting right off the ski lift. So I'm like, okay, this is no big deal. And so it comes time for my dad and I to get off the ski lift, and he gets right off, and then it comes time for me to get off, and I'm not. And I'm just watching the ground get lower and lower and lower. And you are not supposed to. One rule for the ski world is you are not supposed to ride back around. And you have to get off. And so Dad, you know, despite the woman who's yelling at him to not come get me and that the ski lift coming at us is about to hit him, Dad pulls my leg and yanks me down and rescues me. 
And I'd like to think that it's because he loves me, you know, despite the round of applause he got afterwards. <laughs> His love and God's love can rescue you. And so my last point is by what are we rescued? And that's by grace through Jesus. And if y'all have heard that song, Grace Like Rain, like it literally, his love and grace literally floods over us. And he sent his sacrifice, the most important thing that he had. And through Jesus, we are rescued. We can't rescue ourselves. Society can't rescue us. Our boyfriends can't rescue us. Our friends can't rescue us. We can't rescue ourselves. But God can rescue us. And that is something that we should not take for granted because through grace, we are given multiple chances and that's something that we can rejoice about. And so what does all this mean? Like, what does it all mean to be rescued? And that's that we have something to hold on to. And you can kind of think about it as God is our life preserver, our rescue boat that we can be 100% confident in. And it's something that we can hold on to and cling to him. And so I have this quick, it's really quick song. I'm going to read the lyrics, but it's called No Longer Slaves by Brian Johnson. And it says, You unravel me with the melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance. From my enemies to all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. All my fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing, I am a child of God. And it's just so cool, I think, that we've been rescued by the ultimate rescuer. Do you bow with me? Dear God, I just thank you so much for all these girls. And I just thank you so much for bringing them here this weekend. And I just pray that as we go out through this week, through this month, through this year, through our life, that we can realize that we have been rescued by you and that you are somebody who we can be 100% confident in and that we can cling to. And I just pray over all these girls today and all their temptations and their fears that they experience, Lord, that they may seem to hold on to them and to just encompass them. I just pray that they can realize that through you they can be rescued through any temptation or any fear because you are greater and that your love literally floods over us. And I just pray this weekend that Something will hit them. They will take something they can apply to their daily lives and spread to others. And that we can constantly be on fire for you, Lord God. And I just pray that everyone travels safely back home tomorrow or whenever they're leaving. And that this speaking can be an inspiration to so many lives. In Jesus' name, amen.